these are some mentors that we got here and that's the whole idea i feel like okay the reason let me give a little background the reason we set this up was because uh that's kind of how i got into the business and how i learned and a lot of people have gone through this as like apprentice mentor kind of arrangement as you go up through the industry and uh, you always have like a supervisor or some kind of director over your shoulder re- reviewing your work. And to me, that's where you really take off with um, with the learning because you, you really have to. You know, you're forced to <laughs> do the job and learn these things. So we tried to emulate that as much as possible. It's a little bit, um, I think, more geared to- towards the learning environment because in the real world, it's a little cutthroat, right? You got to meet that deadline. You have to hit it. There are consequences there. We try and make it a little more supportive and fun uh, when you're doing these story assignments. But uh, a lot of these guys here, just to give the mentors a little background information, have come in through an intro to storyboarding course, and they're going through assignments right now. And so I thought it could be fun if we just pick at random some of the guys that have submitted stuff and just talk about the work. Because uh, you guys might be, some of you have already submitted stuff who are here now, but it's always nice, I think, to just get some, some, uh, you know, some constructive criticism and some feedback, and and do that. Yeah, what do you say? And I think oh, let's do it. Yeah. If you have any questions too, we can we can get into that as well. Like, Alice, actually, you have one. How about we get to your question? As as that popped up, I see this in the chat. Um, uh, you have a question about performance in in the animatic. How can I imagine the performance for every character? by doing more figure drawing from life or anything else? Ooh, that's interesting. So what what would you guys think? How do you get more performance out of your characters in an animatic? I, I go act it out. Um, if, for me, if the performance, because a lot of times when you're working on something and you're like, you're, you're really crushing on the deadline and you're, you're trying to, I, I find that I try to get the shots first. If I get my blocking and my staging first in my thumbnail pass, then I'm pretty sure I, I, I know where I'm going. Even if I got to change the performance as I go, or if I got to change a shot here or there, or maybe I combine a few things. But, but when you're in that kind of a space, I'm not always thinking about the performance. And so I got I get like stock poses. And then after, then you come back into that second pass and you're just like, that's just not going to work or <laughs> everybody's performance looks the same. Um, so I find if it starts to look stock or the expressions start to look stock, then I just have to go and, and act it out. And I think that that's probably one of the more fun things for me um, because then I can kind of get into a, a, a different headspace than just shot planning. I can actually think about how would this character respond? versus how this other character would respond. Um, and then that usually fuels how the other character is going to respond on screen. You know, So if there's something that's a, a unique performance instead of, I, I had a guy, Dave Schwartz, who just passed away. Dave, would, uh, he was in the business for like 30 something years, man. Worked on all the stuff I watched growing up. Wow, great. Dave, Dave would go, I guess he would go, <laughs> don't do this. <laughs> If I see this finger go up when you got an idea, I'm going to break that finger off in your drawing. <laughs> Find something else. <laughs> we all got these little pet peeves. So, I, I, you know, I, we, we start to find these things. We, we go to our go-tos, and, and he's the first person. I'm going to rip that go-to right off your drawing. Uh, hey. um, that's, that's what I typically do. If it, like, if it starts to feel stock, I just go and act it out. And then I will record video of it. Uh, and then take stills uh, and kind of plus the drawings from there. Oh, that's a cool idea. Do you do anything similar, Eric? Um, definitely. I, I've, I, I try to find some shots first and then let the characters perform within there. I'm going to throw out something too from uh, that I've picked up in acting classes and writing classes is, you know, a lot of times yeah. writers will write and all their dialogue sounds like it's coming from the same person. Um, and a good way to remedy that is is like kind of identify certain wants for each individual character um this is just uh one acting teacher told me about chakras maybe the character always thinks from cerebrally 
Maybe they always think from their stomach. They're always hungry. Maybe they think from their groin. They're attracted, you know, but there's different motivations for characters. And maybe if each one of your characters in this animatic, you assign a different source of where their want is coming from. Maybe it's spiritual. Maybe it's a positive. Maybe it's an evil. But those elements will come through in your performance. If a character is very um, shy, then all their limbs are going to be close to their body and they're going to be really small. But if they're very bombastic, you know, then you're going to have larger, bigger acting and, and bolder and more confident. And, and I think a lot of that will visually show up if you, you know, I think you have the right instinct. You're thinking about what are the core of these characters that differentiate them from each other. Um, differentiate. I think that's a word. May not be, but it is now. We make up words in stories sometimes. <laughs> That's a great animation thing. We um, when when looking at animation, we call it power centers. Uh, is my character leading with their head? Are they are they um, leading with their chest? Are they leading with their stomach? And, and it's that those wants. It's those wants. It's it's how they communicate. Um, so that that really helps uh, to give you know characters, especially when you're just posing them out, and you got four or five in a shot together, and it gets to be a crowded shot. If you can think about their personality and those power centers, it helps you differentiate the posing even right from there. Yeah. I think even taking, like if you took a scene and you said, all right, how would each one of these characters in this scene go to the mailbox and get their mail or answer a phone or return some food to a waiter? Each person's going to have a different way of doing that. And we've all sat with people that do it in a polite, elegant way and with people that maybe aren't so elegant and they're a, a lot more, you know, forward and, and, and rude. Um, but when you start putting your characters through those basic um, everyday moments, you start realizing, oh, this character would totally go navigate that situation differently than this character. And then that's, once you start understanding that, then you're off to the races and your, your scenes are going to soar. Yeah, cool. That's great advice. Um, well, how about we get we get into some of these drawings? I think this worked out well last time. Let's hope it, it works again. If I share my screen, and I'll just bring up the images, and then we can kind of just uh, share it together. So let me see. Let me turn my camera off because I think this is going to take up too much info. So uh, hopefully you can see my screen in the top right. Uh, you can make that bigger, I think. If you click on it and oh it's going crazy let me oh let me switch to <laughs> let me switch to the uh the the different channel so this is the intro to storyboarding channel where we're going to post stuff and ah paul man you've been you just posted something awesome well how about you be the luck we're going to pick you out how about that so one of the assignments was superman versus captain america well not versus superman meets captain america at a coffee shop that was the assignment okay <laughs> And so, can how about we pull this up and we'll take a look at it? Uh, I think I can make this bigger. Let me see. Can you guys see that? It looks great. Hopefully, hopefully you can see that. Yeah. So this is from Paul. Awesome man. Oh, this is really smart too. Whenever you're doing this with a group, put your put your contact information on there too. Because if you're posting in some kind of public place, you know you want people to to know who you are. <laughs> uh, let's take a look at this. Let me see here. Yeah, I think these are looking pretty strong. Let me open up your other, you have some other images here. We can look at them in sequence, uh, hopefully. And then I'll bring up the last one here. And, okay, so let's look at page one. Okay, it looks like, this, this is something from number three to number four. What's the difference here? That's one thing I would, I don't know what's, what the difference is here. He's just walking in. It almost looks like you repeated the frame. That's something I, I point out if you're doing an animatic or, uh, you know, doing it for a printed kind of pitch like this. Uh, you want to make sure that it's visible, the amount of change that's going on in the storyboard panel. So from three to four, that looks like it's the same shot. So you might want, or the same moment. You want to be careful on that. Beautiful drawings, right? Yeah. All the anatomy looks great. The proportions and everything. Yeah. Yeah, drawing's sharp. Superman sitting down here. Ooh, this is a nice composition. 
Yeah, I want to hear the dialogue. I want to hear what's... Yeah, this is... Let me see what else we got here. This is page three. Cool. You know, I, I just overall, let me just, I think drawings are great, you know, and composition looks pretty good. I wonder what I'm trying to figure out is the actual story part. Now, I don't, I don't think it's, um, it would be cool to understand what the dialogue is, but I guess we have to sell that visually, right, Paul? So I think if, if you're here, uh, what I would say is maybe emphasize what it is the conflict is or the, or the, uh, the gag it looks like you're highlighting this girl is 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 like is it captain america here who's like trying to pick out one of the waitresses <laughs> i'm not exactly sure what do you guys think there's a there's a couple of things um that um that i would probably consider uh, i think the drawings are absolutely sharp really really sharp yeah um what I try to figure out, especially in these kind of like, you know, one shot, two shot conversation deals, is I try to figure out um, a hierarchy. In other words, who whose story is this? Who's, whose eyes are we looking at this story through? And, and who has the status? Um, there's only a handful of times where I've seen a film where the status is really even when you see two people. And the first one that comes to mind that's iconic is Heat. I'm sure there's more, but for me, the first one I think of is uh, uh, Al Pacino, meaning uh, De Niro. Yeah. And and they're pretty pretty even in terms of their balance from shot to shot. Most of the time, though, in a situation like this, someone has a little bit of status. And that usually means that uh, the higher the status uh, one character has, we might put the camera slightly underneath them so that we're slightly looking at them. Nothing really high dramatic, really, in a shot like this or a moment like this. But for me, if I can find that, then the, the, the other character, I might tend to put the camera slightly above them so we're looking down at them. And just that dynamic alone helps change or it helps tell a little bit of the story that maybe there's a conflict, maybe somebody has a little bit of status, and that that differentiates those shots pretty quickly. Um, other things that we might consider um, in our framing, are they both sitting in an open posture or are they both sitting in a closed posture? Or are we changing their performance? If we can change their performance a little bit, so you know maybe it is Superman having a, a, a bad day. If he's having a bad day, maybe his posture's closed, like Eric was talking about. And then we might utilize different compositional elements to make him feel a little bit more closed. Maybe Captain America's having a great day. I mean, he put down the he put down everything. He didn't even need the Avengers that day. He just took care of business. So he's just really sitting there owning the space. He might have his arm out uh, and he's just kind of owning the space and it's open for him. Those kind of dynamics will greatly change the shots between the two of them. And, and that would help um, give you more variety. Those are my quick, those are my initial thoughts off the cuff. Yeah, what do you think? Nice. Anything to add there, uh, Eric? Yeah, I'd, well, I, I get the sense that this is for a live action shoot. Um, just you're doing one panel it seems like per scene which is which is great and with certain directors that is what they want i just want to know what my setups are so i can tell my dp in animation uh, there's obviously going to be a lot more um you know the director is going to want to see how you act out what are some of the gags what are the the conflict or the change of the scene you know they both come in walking but does one crawl out does one leave triumphant um so you know this is a different type of storyboarding and it's certainly uh it it's it's spot on for live action when we move this if this was an animated film which is where most of my experience comes um i just know there's a lot more posing and and less concentration or equality with the character and background which you have these are mm -hmm. great drawings and, and they quickly read, but for speed and, and working on, on 
you know, on the day to day, the backgrounds quickly drop off for me and the detail kind of drops off and mm -hmm. we just want to get um, laying out some of the, the blocking and the acting. Um, and so that, that's the first thing that jumped off at me is, okay, this is going to be more probably for a live action environment as compared to an animated movie or TV show. Cool. Awesome. Well, thanks, Paul. If you're if you're here, man, and uh, yeah, give us some comments too if you if you feel like uh, you want to chime in. How about we go to another one? Um, let me pull up uh, this one was was awesome from Sev Drake. I saw this uh, earlier. Our sweet Dave here. Let me let me see if I can play this and make it bigger. Uh, so this is an animatic. Uh, I'm not sure if the audio will play. Let me just. My father with it. such empty gestures, Zag. You said you're getting out of here. Let's focus on that and leave me be. It's not an empty gesture, then. Besides, if I wasn't trying to stay focused, I'd be drinking it myself. You're really asking me to join you for a drink? Coast is clear. The work can wait. I mean, you know what? Sure. The work can wait. All right. Did the audio come across there? I didn't hear any. Oh, no, no. I didn't. Okay. Audio. Bummer. Um, well, you guys can click on that on your own. <laughs> but <laughs> the uh, let me just oh, let me replay this. Teachers. Like there is a lot of dialogue here. And I think probably let me click close this because it's on YouTube. Um, the first thing that comes to mind, it's like I be, it's probably even worse without dialogue. If I if, let me just turn the volume off on my own thing <laughs> is that uh, these shots play out real like these are really long shots for the amount of dialogue, especially this one here seems to drag on a bit. So my suggestion would be to intercut this or, or uh, there's another way that you could do this is put some more life into your staging so that the visual interest um, stays alive as your as your characters are talking and doing this walk and talk thing. Um, one thing to point out too, careful with your headroom because your you guys are like touching the top of the frame here and uh, you want to give them a little more breathing room and I'd probably just, you know, uh, widen the camera frame a little bit to get a full shot and stay with the full shot. But, the, you know, the execution is, is really nice. I mean, you're putting a lot of polish in there. I think I would probably do without so much polish at the beginning here and focus more on the actual shots and the storytelling. This is seems like it's a spin-off of the actual Superman Captain America thing that we just saw, but um, uh, what do you guys think? I know that the dialogue didn't come across, but you can click on that uh, on your own, I guess. But I, I loved how you open with that sense of space in that giant room. Um, it's a great establishing shot, which is, I think, sometimes people forget to let the viewer know where we're at. So you do a great job of that and some of the elements, you know, um, the blue flame and the drink and and the long walk to their meeting place. Uh, one thing that I know that that mentors have pointed out for me in the past were just, you know, can I stop any frame and kind of get a sense on what the acting is, the, the emotion of who's who's uh who's got the status who's lower status who's happy who's sad um and stuff like that and so some of these are kind of neutral and you know understandably you got one panel and, and you're doing a slow walk um but i would you know the fun part now is to go in there and and to flesh that out that's what we do as storyboard artists is we carve out the acting and the performance and um you've laid out your shots and then like Sergio says, now you get to go in and really dress it up. Yeah, awesome. I, I think you make good use of, um, it looks like you're using uh, some of the animating layers in Storyboard Pro. And and so you're making, you're availing yourself of uh, some of what the software can do. I, I would tend to agree with what Eric and Sergio have said. Uh, I, what will help this really long shot time-wise, not camera is to intercut and even if we didn't hear the dial and this is something that's really really important for me if i have no dialogue can your staging and your performance 
tell me the gist of the story. And if that is what's readable, especially for animation, primarily for animation, if, if that reads, for me, the dialogue is kind of the icing on the cake, you know. Um, yeah. And sometimes can even drive the voice acting if the voice acting hasn't been done. So I may have maybe intercut um, in that long shot, you know, do we see more of the environment? So maybe we pull out even wider than that so we can see more of what's going on. What else is going on in that hall? Is something in the dialogue said and does one of the other characters react to it? And maybe we don't see the other person talking, but we would hear them talking and watch the other character's response. So we would underlap that dialogue so that we can, underlapping meaning look at somebody else while the other person is speaking the dialogue. We get to watch the other character's reaction and their performance. And so those kind of things are really, really helpful in terms of breaking up the monotony of a shot that is that takes forever and a day to get to where it's going. Um, yeah. When those things happen, for me, I tend to go watch those those walkie-talkie things, which we all have done. <laughs> we yeah. all get the script because writers just love to chew up space. You know, um, I, I tend to try and watch a good director and, and see how they do it. So like um, Steven Soderbergh, um, who has, whose films have really great dialogue, I try to look at how does he handle Brad Pitt and George Clooney talking to each other in a, in a, in a sequence in Ocean's Eleven? You know, how does he get that, that snappy dialogue and yet, you know, keep it interesting as well as the, dialogue, the shots? So I tend to try to find inspiration if I'm kind of like falling flat. <laughs> cool. That's great. Uh, well, let's do one more and let's see if we can. This, this one looks great from Half, Half Cactus. So um, this one was from assignment one, which is to do 10 single panel storytelling images. And let me see if I can pull this up a little bit larger. Can you guys see that? Uh, let's take a look at this. This is, looks like there's some mice with some cheese and a cat, it looks like. Okay, cool. And it looks like some kind of car situation. Now, these don't have to be interconnected, so it can be isolated. Uh, single panel storytelling images, or they could actually, you know, be in sequence and kind of be beat boards in a way. I think these look really great. I mean, I th overall, you know, I kind of want to find out more of some of the stories. I've been pointing out to a couple people, one of the tendencies that I see often is I feel like people are framing, uh, they, either fr they either frame too tight <laughs> in general. I think that's usually the, some, so something like this, I would call it out that everything is just so perfectly fit into the frame like this one here and maybe the girl with the car even though there's a like foreground and a, and a background here i feel like it's all just really tight so and, and even this one with the bar and like the bartender here like i wonder if you just pull the camera out wider actually all of these probably even the mouse one that it would feel like oh there's a little more room to breathe in 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 the environment or in the set there and uh, that's one tendency. The other one that I see too is that um, that uh, people aren't using enough of the of the composition. But that's a different problem that we can get into. <laughs> uh, how about these? For any comments on these first series of panels here? I find the drawings to be pretty pretty solid um, as yeah. a start. Yeah. I agree. Um, Let me see if I can make this. Bigger. I like oh, that you've simplified. I like that that you've simplified your value structure. Um, when, when we're boarding, even for, for live action, we don't have to get really render happy or crazy. Um, we really just need to differentiate space. You know, sometimes uh, on, on an animated show, if we only really concentrate on lighting if there's a call out for lighting effects. Um, but certainly I think in feature um, and live action, being able to kind of craft how light falls like you're doing here and then and do it in a simple, uh, effective like three value structure is really 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 solid um, I would agree with Sergio some of the tendencies I see in young people and I see it in myself and let me be very very clear I started out with Sergio 10 years ago <laughs> I had years as an illustrator but I, I came into doing boards pretty green I had some composition background some storytelling background but cinematography is a whole other ball of wax so I know what you guys are feeling 
And, and I had to learn as one of my tendencies of either crowding the frame, my, my other tendency was that I felt, as, I felt like I was trying to put everything in a frame within a box. And it took me some time to, to think through and go, but wait, if I were filming, this would just be one place I stopped when I moved the camera. There's a whole other world outside of that frame. It's a whole 360 degree set. And once I started thinking about the fact that it's a 360 degree set, then when I would sketch, I wouldn't, I would just draw the frame, but I would just draw and let things move around. And I didn't try to fit it so neatly in the box. If it wasn't the way I wanted it, I would just do another thumbnail and kind of expand and move around. Um, Working in Storyboard Pro is really helpful for that because you can draw however big you want and you're not constrained to the frame like you might be in Photoshop. Uh, so it, that those are things that really help me kind of get outside of the keeping everything inside of this, this box. So. Yeah. Cool. Well, I brought up some more images from Half Cactus here. I think these are really fun, right? Yeah, what do you think about these, Eric? I was just going to add that... Um... That those first five that you showed, I noticed three of them have a large character on the left side of frame. It's kind of a similar composition, which is great. It's very effective. Um, and I love this assignment because it really gets you, your your brain grinding on like, okay, what's the best way to tell this story? And, um, you know, I know everybody's here because they're hungry to, to, to work on this. So I'm going to throw this out. Every one of these panels, do 10 versions. Do 10 versions of these mice looking at the cheese and the, and the, the cat. Do 10 versions of the, the person walking into the bar. Do 10 versions of the car ominously following a girl home. And, and what you do by, by doing 10, you're going to be like, oh, God, why would I? But you, you're not going to get so precious. And you're going to draw faster, and you're going to draw quicker, and you're going to jam through some ideas. And what happens is we have a tendency to go with things that we're familiar with. I'm just guessing because I've seen this composition three times, you're comfortable with that position. It works for you and it's very effective. But when you do that composition 10 times, the pose for seven, eight, maybe 10, it might be pretty cool. And you might be like, oh my gosh, this is a brand new composition. This totally works better. Um, and so, all we want to do is just get you used to working fast, working loose, stretching your brain, coming up with new ideas. You obviously are very creative because all 10 of these are fantastic, wildly different stories and narrative. Yeah. It's going to, it's, it's only going to plus your overall work. And that goes for everyone that's on this, uh, on this uh, chat right now. Uh, yeah, very cool. It really reads. I, I, I like the, the story. I like you're, you're definitely experimenting with light and depth and the plane, the depth of the, the Z axis and all that. And, and that's important. You got to put that camera everywhere. Yeah, cool. That's awesome. Um, well, thanks, guys. C keep that stuff coming. Let me let me see if. Um, well, if, I think, uh, you know, we're. we're we're a little past the half hour point. It's, we just want to do a kind of a quick chat here. But if you guys have any questions, uh, let us know. I mean, that's what we're here for. Oh, my camera's not turned on, but um, no big deal. I'll just keep it off for now. That, uh, so the, a couple of, let me just, a couple logistic things. So a lot of you guys have, have just recently started up with this course. Some of you have been doing this for uh, a couple of weeks now because we started this at the beginning of July, uh, or it was the end of June and now the beginning of July here. So, uh, we have another week left, and so those of you guys who just, who just came on, there's plenty of time to do a couple drawings, and I just recommend you to go for it, have fun with it. You know, uh, there's no really no pressure. You know, the idea is that you just like get into storytelling and have fun and see what you can produce, right? And uh, the other thing that I'll mention too is, and I'll, I'll get the link, is we're doing a portfolio event this weekend on Saturday to talk about uh, specifically storyboard portfolios and how to you know, how to gear your artwork to uh, landing jobs. And the, that one in particular is because a lot of people are having issues. I see this a lot is that they, there's, they're making a lot of the same, um, 
I don't even know when I say this mistakes, but they're they're not tar- targeting their portfolio for a storyboard job, and they they might do things that are unrelated. And we're going to talk a lot about that. Let me just put in that link in the chat. Uh, it's like, totally free. Uh, I recommend you sign up and uh, and go live because it'll it'll give you all the info on what you need to do. Basically, just bring a link that you have for your current portfolio, and we're going to get critique it live with the people that are there. So Chad uh, Pickerel, who's uh, Part of Storyboarder is going to be there. I'll be there, and uh, a couple others as well. And yeah, you guys are welcome too, Eric and Lincoln, if you want to hang out. <laughs> but uh, it's a lot of fun. I'll be also talking about the mentorship program too for those who are interested. And we're doing a giveaway. This is the one cool thing about that event. We're giving away one seat to the Story Artist Mentorship Program for the summer. So uh, on that event page, that's why you want to sign up on the event page when you get that link. There's a button there that you can sign up for this raffle prize and. Uh, so that's that's gonna be really fun. One of you guys are gonna is gonna win that and hopefully uh, enjoy enjoy that experience. But um, cool. Anything else you guys want to add or any any questions going on? I had a question. Yeah. Um, so I've been having trouble. Like I just signed up for this earlier this week and I saw the assignment and it's to do like the ten panels. So I've been working on that yesterday and today and then I see you posted assignment too so i feel like i'm falling behind like um should i be working faster or is it that i signed up too late no (laughs) no i think you signed up totally on time so that's a really great question um yeah thanks thanks daisy i think the the, uh no work at your own pace so here's what i recommend yeah these lessons are going to come out come out at you pretty quickly you know there's a lot of content there you can watch those those videos when you get to them but the actual artwork I, I want you to spend time on it and, and really get into it and make it fun. Now, don't make it so precious and perfect, kind of like what Eric mentioned. It's nice to do many variations that you loosen up and and test your skills of, of idea creation and stuff. But no, you're not behind and don't feel like um, that because, you know, you just signed up that, oh, I got to rush to do this. There really is no deadline. I want, you know, the part of the design of this course is that you you get into this idea of storytelling and just creating artwork, right? And out of this, you you know, the couple of guys I, I see um, that have posted, you can see the feed later on on your own, and you'll see there's some really awesome and inspiring pieces there. Like people are really going to town, and I think some guys are going to have a portfolio piece out of it, and that's that's an added plus. So hopefully you can do that too. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah, it makes me feel better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, take the pressure off. Like you know, right. <laughs> we're supposed to have fun, right? This is art. This yeah. is like you know storytelling. So. Uh, no, there's no grades. There's no like pressure. What what I like to do, and I you know I think Lincoln and Eric both would probably agree with me. I really um, appreciate when I get honest feedback for the stuff that I do because that's something I can use. And you know maybe I disagree, but I have to ask myself, oh, you know, did this guy bring up a, a valid point? Like, did I miss something in my in my sequence? Right? Have you guys ever had that experience where? You might have a supervisor or some kind of director give you a note and you're like, ah, wait, at first I don't agree. But then you sit there and you think about it. You're like, oh, you know what? He might have a point. Let me, <laughs> let me see what to do here. And, yeah. You Very know, much. I, I like that. Um, I personally like that. And I also like to, um, I like to ask my teammates. So if I'm, a, if I have a story team or something and I, I got other people around before I pitch to the group, I'll go, hey, hey man, can you look at my work and just, you know, I'm doing this thing and I'll, I'll kind of pitch whatever sequence I'm doing to some like I used to share an office with, with another buddy and we would share ideas and stuff like that and he'd be like you know this doesn't make sense like what, what's going on here and then oh, okay okay let me fix that oh yeah yeah that does that, that does, does look weird <laughs> so anyway that happens a lot feedback is huge um because when you work you know a lot of times the nature of this business you're you're drawing alone and you're kind of you're drawing all night and you fall in love with your drawings and you kind of think, oh, this is great. And then you, know, you go to bed and you come back in the morning and you're like, wait, what order is this and why? It's, it's, it seduces you into thinking it's, it's, it's great. And then you get some feedback that kind of shatters that bubble and you kind of go like, oh, the story in my head isn't translating through this piece of paper or this drawing to my audience. And that's the most important thing. Yeah. I mean, if your audience can't pick up the message or the story or the vibe that you want to deliver, 
That's unfortunate. It's the death of a stand-up comic. It's the death of a director or a storyteller or an author. Um, and so feedback is just so important. And I, I just, I know as a young artist, sometimes I was really reluctant to go show people my work and it's, you know, it's raw, it's not done yet and I'm not ready yet and it's kind of unfinished. And you can give every excuse you can, but really the feedback is great. And it just gives your audience, okay, this is where they're at. And then you get to see like all the growth that happens and the growth will happen. Um, but it happens faster when you share it with others and you get that dialogue going. And um, if you have a great community on a Discord or a program that can chime in and help you, it's it just makes that learning and that growth exponentially faster yeah oh yeah i couldn't yeah, agree I, more. I, I couldn't agree yeah exactly i couldn't agree more um and sometimes i would say ha having taught for a while now i i think when when s students or people that are kind of in a, in a learning environment are amongst peers and not amongst instructors or mentors it's a whole lot easier to pitch mm -hmm. you feel a whole lot safer because you feel like oh, we're all on the same page together, we're all in the same boat together, and and I think it's good to to say, hey, what are you guys doing at seven thirty? Let's hop on the channel and we're just gonna pitch. If you if you're if you're open at seven thirty or whenever, we're just gonna meet for half an hour. We're just gonna pitch what we got, yeah, and and give each other some notes, and 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 I flat guarantee you, every one of you will see something in in somebody else's board. That you that you didn't see in your own. <laughs> it, it's amazing how that works. You will completely blow by any any of your blind spots in yours, but you will definitely see where someone else is, where it's happening in somebody else's. So that tells that that should tell you that you you're learning something, but that your eyes are so tired and used to looking at your own work that you're not seeing it. So that when somebody else brings up the same thing to you, you can go, oh, oh, I see that. Because I understand what you're saying. Because I just pointed it out in yours. Yeah. And, uh, so and it's, benefit, it's really... well, sorry, like it' good. Oh yeah, no, good. Go ahead. I was gonna say the benefit of watching thirty people bring in their project of Captain America and Superman have coffee, and you begin to go like, "Oh, that is a great shot. I love how he did that." Or the, oh, "Okay, that was confusing, but oh, I really like this how they featured that," and and you just start seeing. And, and growing together and collaborating together, uh, either directly or indirectly, and that's the part I found is wonderful when you're teaching is is by all working on the same assignment, having your own individual voices, you really get to benefit on like, oh, I really like what they did there. Maybe that part I, I I wouldn't have thought of approaching it that way, but it's 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 only benefits you to get exposed to different ways of doing things. Yeah, fantastic. Really great. All right, guys. I think, you know, this is probably a good place to end it. Uh, I want to thank Eric uh, Kuska. Thanks, man, for coming. Lincoln Adams, uh, both of you guys, thanks for, for participating and giving us some, some feedback here. And, uh, you know, you can always uh, direct message me. Like I said, the course is still open right now. So keep on posting. Keep on working on your drawings. And I want to see that stuff. And even after this, if you have a question, uh, yeah, like I said, just hit me up in the Discord or in that intro to storyboarding channel um, so that we can all discuss it and share ideas together. So thanks, guys. Yeah, I appreciate you being on today. And, uh, and we'll talk soon.